I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is not a review of an adult entertainment title. Did you ever hear about the Dirty Dozen? I asked my community. Yes, said, well, nobody. Nobody said yes. So that's why I think this is a great topic for today's episode. We are all humans and we are prone to error, prone to making mistakes. Yet you are not just a human, you are a pilot as well. Extensive research has been done into commercial pilot error. And I think it is time that we learn some lessons from that, that we can apply to our world being recreational aviators. I took a commercial aviation training tool and adopted it where needed for our specific circumstances, helping you to reflect on yourself and others. So I made this episode with four types of pilots in mind. Pilots that do not remember when their last error was. It was so long ago. Pilots that recently made an error and may still be losing some sleep over it. All pilots in between and all pilots that don't like talk. They just want to fly. They just want to see cool and awesome footage. Especially for this last group, this episode may be very important. Welcome to Flight Coach. If you're new here, my name is Pas van Duin and it is my mission to help you get more out of life and your flying career to have less stress and more skills. So the Dirty Dozen is a list of 12 of most common human error precursors or conditions that could act as precursors. And by the way, what is it? An error precursor. Something in the context that a pilot finds himself or herself in that provides fertile feeding ground for errors to occur. Now why is this important? Because the vast majority of accidents in aviation is caused by exactly this. Pilot error. Now the selection of these 12, which was not done by me by the way, is meant as an introduction as a way of opening a conversation on this subject and make it normal to talk about it. Now, originally developed for aircraft maintenance in 1992 by a guy called George Dupont and he was working for Transport Canada. Now it's used in different industries and within the aviation industry it's used to train ramp personnel, ground crew, cabin crew, ATC and of course pilots. And that's where you come in. A quick shout out to Jeroen Buis, an amazing human being, a great paragliding pilot, you can almost call him a paragliding philosopher and one of the guys responsible for my instructor training. And also to Coast de Keizer, a world-class hang gliding pilot who recently converted to the dark side. He became a paraglider pilot as well. In his daily life, he works as a forensic medical doctor. So he knows a lot about how our brains work, whether they're still inside our head or splattered across a wall. They provided me with great input for this episode. The things I'm about to discuss in this video are by no means intended to be complete and comprehensive. These are examples I think suit the specific topics very well, but you may find that some are not applicable to all situations. You may also have examples that suit these topics way better. Please share them in the comments below so we can all benefit from that. I will give you a short explanation and some tips to deal with each one. So in random order, First item on the list, lack of communication. Now this can be quite a broad topic. It can be communication that you as an instructor have over the radio with your students. Or it can be conversations you have on the ground with other team members. Or it can be you as a free flying pilot talking to your buddies while flying. Things you should do, speak short sentences. Keep your words as precise and simple as possible. Speak slower than normal and the receiver must repeat the message. Complacency, also known as the intermediate syndrome or as I have called it the steps of doom. That's a way better name don't you think? Complacency means thinking I can do this. I've done it so many times. And would you happen to know it I made an entire episode specifically about this topic so I don't think it's much use go into detail in this video. Just check it out via the link above. Lack of knowledge. Now, of course, you don't know what you don't know. It's important to be aware of that. But also, don't assume that someone else will know. What should you do? 
Have an open attitude towards learning and improving yourself. And create that atmosphere for others around you as well. Read the manuals. Talk to local pilots. Ask targeted questions. Distraction. That's anything that can draw your focus away from the task at hand. How should you deal with this? Finish what you are doing instead of paying attention to the thing that's trying to distract you. A practical example of this is when you are running a checklist. Let's say you're buckling up and doing your checks just before takeoff. You should not interrupt someone that's working on their checks. And when you're the pilot working on your checks, you should not allow yourself to be interrupted by someone else. And if there's no way around it, restart the check. Stop the check and start again from the beginning once the distracting factor is gone. Also beware of friends, family or other spectators. And watch out while using a camera. That can be distracting as well. Lack of teamwork. Now I found it quite hard to translate these examples which are used for teams working together in aviation context. I found it quite hard to translate these to examples specific for pilots since it's more a solo focused thing. So instead I decided to write this one specifically for instructors. It means in this context not working effectively together which can for instance lead to errors which can impact the safety of your students. What should you do to prevent this one? Make sure that you know the skills and specific learning points of all the persons in your crew. Make a very clear division of roles within the instruction team. Beware of buddies forming in a group and also beware of little subconscious competitions arising. Fatigue. Being tired greatly reduces your risk assessment abilities, your decision making skills and it reduces your reflexes. So if you've had a long day of travel to come to the location where you're going to fly, ask yourself is it wise to make a flight today or should I save that for tomorrow? And if you decide to go fly on that same day, ask yourself is it wise to do that with the same margins as I normally hold or should I keep broader margins for myself? So let's first see what this graph shows us. It's taken from commercial aviation and it shows us the phases of the flight and the amount of effort needed for those phases. I think we can assume this is also applicable to our kind of aviation. It also shows the diminishing pilot capabilities over time due to increasing fatigue. But what does it tell you in our context? Take some time to think about that. The safety margin is smallest when the task that needs most effort, the landing, occurs. But is that all? We can increase our capabilities to increase the margin. But is there more? For me, the main takeaway here lies in the difference with airlines. We have no schedule to stick to. We have no destination and time slot to deliver passengers. A great way to increase the safety margin for us is just landing a bit earlier when you are less tired. So what should you do? Realize that this system is in effect. Drink enough and even though it does not prevent you from getting tired, it does make sure that the impulses in your brain cells keep firing and that you stay focused. Don't stretch your flight too long. A lack of resources. Not having a proper weather forecast is dangerous. Just as not knowing the limitations of your gear. So before visiting a new location, inform with local pilots what kind of resources they use for their information. Have your gear in order. And of course, RTFM. Don't know what it is? Look it up. Pressure. Now this is a very popular one. You recognize any of these statements? Hurry up, the van up to the mountain is about to leave. Get a move on with your takeoff, the rain is coming. I want to make as many flights as possible this week. So what should you do? Focus on the task at hand. Don't try the safe face. If you need more time than your mates to make ready for takeoff, then so be it. 
If you need more time than your flying buddies to pack up your stuff, then so be it. Don't let yourself be rushed. Maybe consider just skipping a flight. And the last one is be assertive. And this also ties into the next one. Lack of assertiveness. Assertiveness is about communicating directly, but honestly and appropriately. Giving respect to the opinions and views of others, but not compromising our own. That's beautiful, right? The way I said it. Yeah, I just stole that, to be honest. Uh, you can read all about it via a link that I'll leave down below in the description. Assertiveness pertains to more than just how we communicate. It also relates to how we fly. For instance, imagine the situation in which you and another pilot are approaching a certain official landing field at the same altitude. You may be at different lateral locations now, but you will end up in each other's path when you get closer to landing. Why not be assertive and solve it right away by making some vertical distance? Just use a descending technique to get some spacing between yourself and the other pilot. So did you recognize any of these? Go ahead and order them for yourself from being most susceptible to least susceptible. And if you dare, leave them in the comments down below. Let's get a conversation going and learn from each other. I will do the same and pin that comment underneath this video. Of course, I realize the order may change depending on the circumstances, but I believe due to our habits and patterns, a certain order will come to mind. So you like my stuff? Then press the like button for this episode. And maybe consider subscribing. Don't forget to press the bell icon so you get notified when I upload the second part in this series. In that episode, we will discuss the rest of the list, among which is stress. And I have some very interesting research to show you on that topic. We will conclude that episode with a very nice exercise you can do together with your flying buddies, your students, or your fellow instructors. See you next time. See you in the air.